So, if I want to plot V out over V D D S magnitude. So, how do I start? I will start with this DC. What is this? 1 over G M 1. Then if this is omega P 1, now you have a 0 and and where is your pole? So, it is at omega u g b which is nothing but beta a naught omega b correct. It will flatten out. Now, on the same if I want to consider omega p 2 so we will copy this now So, what will happen? What will happen to this curve? So, omega p 2 is slightly above your omega u g b roughly 2 x or so for 60 degree phase margin. You have so this will go with plus 20 d b. because I want to write this gain. So, this is plus 20 dB per decade here that pole is cancelled out then you have a second pole. So, now you have a 1 0 and 2 poles minus ok and it will keep going. What is the gain this? Can anybody tell? GM2 or out. Now go back to your circuit. Let us see why it is GM2 or out. So, at high frequency around UGB, this capacitor will get shorted ground and now this is acting as common gate amplifier. So, now if you consider only this, so you have a GM of this and R out that is the gain that is it and that is why it will saturate at gm to r now on the same graph we'll swap the poles omega p2 here now your omega ugb will become beta a naught omega p2 and this guy will become omega p1 how this plot will get modified just like in it was in your z out ok. So, now, your 0 is above ugb. So, this will remain flat ok sorry not flat this will minus 20 dB per decade. some space here.
ठीक है दिस इज द पॉइंट वेयर इट विल एंड देन इट विल कीप गोइंग लाइक दिस ओके सो देयर इज नो एस एच प्लस ट्वेंटी डी बी कैन हेयर बिकॉज इन द प्रीवियस केस जीरो वॉज कमिंग फर्स्ट एंड देन द पोल बट इन दिस केस पोल इज कमिंग फर्स्ट देन जीरो विल कम सो फ्लैट एंड आउट एंड देन अगेन सो इट विल कीप गोइंग एंड दिस इज द पॉइंट वेयर सेकेंड पोल विल कम सॉरी द जीरो विल कम एंड वेयर वॉज द पोल पोल वॉज एट सो यू हैव अ जीरो एंड पोल रिमेंबर एंड जीरो इज एट अ लोअर फ्रीक्वेंसी सो फर्स्ट जीरो विल कम एंड देन पोल एंड दिस पोल विल अपेयर एट अगेन गेन टाइम्स ऑफ योर पोल बट एट एनी स्टेज यू सी योर रेस्पॉन्स इज ओनली इंप्रूविंग इट्स नॉट डिग्रेडिंग कंपेयर टू द प्रीवियस केस बिकॉज गेन इज ऑलवेज ड्रॉपिंग सो इफ यू लुक एट आर हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी इट्स इवन बेटर देन योर डी सी इफ योर डॉमिनेंट पोल इज एट द आउटपुट एंड वी वर गेटिंग द सिमिलर बिहेवियर फॉर जेड आउट ऑल्सो विच मीन्स इफ यू कीप योर डॉमिनेंट पोल एट आउटपुट इट इम्प्रूव योर बोथ लाइन एंड लो ट्रांसियंट ओके सो द ए सी विल डिफाइन द लाइन ट्रांसियंट एंड डीसी विल डिफाइन योर लाइन रेगुलेशन so omega p1 let's write here so what i didn't consider here this was your r out and if this is your vdd and this is your v out so in the output we are considering only gm component but if you have a r out here finite r out call it r out 2 then now you have a two currents actually so even if you don't have a this gm component this component is going to be there and that will limit your okay so this will act like a, a voltage divider ha huh? okay so in the previous so this component will be added basically in the output when you derive again you will see this component will get added with that so uh, and this component uh, will be nothing but r out over r o2 plus r out that's a voltage divider nothing else that is the extra term you are getting but if you consider r o2 infinite then it will go away or r out is much much larger than r out then that component will go away so now if i have a n mos let's say n mos regulator so let's copy the same circuit Okay. So what ha will it have a GM component or not? It's a source follower, ah. Huh? So it's a unity gain. So GM component is not there, the gain component. But you have this component R O two, and we know the R O two if considered much much larger than R out, then. What will be the line transient? Better or or worse? R O two should be larger for better. No, larger. Forget about larger. Let's say even it even if it's a finite, consider like relatively both in both the cases you have a same R out. Okay, in the previous case we didn't consider. Let's say consider in both P MOS and N MOS you have a roughly similar R out. Which one will have a better line regulation and line transient? N MOS or P MOS? N MOS. Because you don't have that amplification factor, ah. Huh? 
correct. So, the 0 which was causing and your output was amplifying. Now, if let us say at high frequency this is grounded. So, even if this is grounded, whatever change is happening here, it is not getting amplified. It will only appear through this RO2, that is it. Because output will not have a component of gate to drain, it will have only have a VGS, it is a source follower. Okay. So, it will have a very weak component of VDD appearing at the output. Yes. Why? Yeah, but that component is smaller. Huh? You are getting amplified here you, at around UGB. It is going, but that component is less than one. Huh? Here, that component will be more than one. No, why are you looking at R out? We are looking at line transient. No, how this curve will uh, modify with the NMOS? So, your DC will remain same, DC will remain same. Okay. No, one pole in both the case we are considering, there are two poles. So, let us consider the same thing, consider your omega P1 is dominant. Okay. So, if that is shorted, what will be the gain looking from VDD to output? Resistor divider, huh? R out over. So, that is less than 1 or more than 1, tell me. So, it is improving or degrading? So, in the worst case, it can go to unity, you can assume. It will not be worse than that. But here, it is more than 1. I and mean, GM to R out might be 10 or 20, you do not know depending upon uh, what is uh, R out and, and GM of that. It might be even 100. So, it will make it worse. So, if I want to draw, we will start with 1 over beta. And this will be R out over okay. And then second pole will come and start. So line regulation, uh, not the line regulation, I would say line transient. Okay, but you know the limitations with NMOS, you have to boost the gate voltage. So, these are the reasons we try to use NMOS rather than PMOS if your uh, omega P1 is dominant. Okay. So, your line transient is better, your low transient is better, and uh, obviously, the mobility is higher. So, uh, it will require a smaller size transistor for the same current drive. And if you even use a charge pump to boost the gate voltage, overall area may remain same or, or less and uh, you get a added advantage of better performance in terms of uh, uh, transient response okay? and PSRR. So, line transient is better and PSRR is also better. Okay. Line transient, PSRR and uh, line 
hands and yes okay and but the line regulation which is a dc component that will remain same because that is not even dependent on your output stage gain it only depends on first stage gain why do you require a uh, this uh, why this psrr is, is critical here for ld yeah so most of the time you use it uh, the input which is coming to your ldo so you have a switching regulator and we briefly talked about this when we were uh, looking at introduction of regulators and this is your linear regulator so this guy will have some ripple and this is your let's say analog system so there are two reasons one is like quite possible that main supply is coming from switching regulator so it will have noise okay so you deliberately insert the regulator here to filter out these ripples okay so uh, i mean let's say this regulator require is is 1.8 volt and you require 1.6 volt you can uh, regulate your switching regulator at 1.6 volt but it will have ripple okay so um, i mean i am considering 200 millivolt drop but when you use it as a sub regulator you keep the drop out very low so that you don't lose efficiency 50 millivolt or so and uh, so based on uh, your ripple frequency you decide what bandwidth you will require so obviously if you keep the uh, output pole dominant then it will behave like a low pass filter in that case it's going to improve your uh, psrr or so it will filter out all the ripples obviously but if you keep the omega p1 dominant then you have to be bit careful you should not keep your ugb around your ripple frequency otherwise it won't help which means what we need to do you need to extend again this region the flat region and make sure this is falling around your ripple frequency the flat region so omega p1 if you keep around your ripple frequency okay which means your ugb should be gain times of your whatever the loop gain times of your which be very high basically you need to keep but most of the time designing that high uh, bandwidth uh, regulator is not feasible due to power re regions so even uh, and these ripples are usually a uh, order of 10 millivolt or so so even if you get a 10 times reduction you can bring it down to 1 millivolt or so which may be enough for your application uh, below 1 millivolt so you just try to make sure your gb is uh, basically uh, maybe 10 times below this peak or so or you keep your gb uh, not gb you keep your this region which means you have to reduce the bandwidth and make this cap very large in that case so that will come at the cost of your capacitor or area but one problem might be with that like uh, sometimes uh, these regulators are operated in low frequency at light load so that may fall within ugb again and it may degrade your psrr there so that is not a preferable case so you always try to extend the bandwidth to improve the PSR or make the output pole dominant if it's possible. Okay, if your pole is at output, uh, the dominant pole, then your PSR is better throughout all the frequencies. But if your compensation pole or dominant pole is at uh, first stage output, then uh, it 
contributes to a 0 basically the pole itself gets converted to a 0 uh, if you look from VDD side and it causes rise in the magnitude which means your PSRR is degrading and we know PSRR is uh, basically uh, for DC it is called uh, line regulation. So, line regulation uh, will not get affected uh, or the DC uh, supply rejection will not get affected uh, whether you make output pole dominant or uh, the first stage uh, pole dominant, but AC will get affected and uh, which means that will affect your line transient as well. And example we looked at uh, if you have a switching regulator and uh, uh, which is generating 1.8 volt and uh, your system analog system requires 1.6 volt. So, you can just have a linear regulator that will filter out all the ripple and sometime this is done deliberately. Uh, so, let us say you want 1.6 volt. So, from switching regulator you generate 1.65 volt. So, that your drop out in linear regulator is low and you do not lose uh, much efficiency in, in doing that and same time you get filtering. So, uh, there could be other ways of uh, filtering this. You can add a simple low pass filter in series with your supply but all of them will again uh, come at the cost of your efficiency and cost uh, because uh, uh, if let us say I put a RC which means you need requ require external R and C and since I cannot put a large R because it is driving high current you have to put a very small R and then in order to have a very low uh, cutoff filter your C should be large. So, it will come at the co cost of large capacitor. Or you can put a, uh, if you want to do it more effectively, you can put a LC filter. LC filter will give a second order, uh, basically transfer function and, uh, but then we know inductor is, is expensive. So, again it will come at the cost of, but sometime it is uh, it's done. Uh, sometimes we do on chip also. So, let us say in the on chip you have multiple systems and you are coming, uh, your main supply is coming from switching regulator and uh, your uh, uh, system requires analog system requires uh, clean supply. Then you on chip put uh, some R, uh, R and C and it will do some filtering. So, those are like brute force way of uh, uh, basically reducing, reducing the uh, noise in the supply. But uh, if you look at the linear regulator then we must ensure that it should have a good PSRR at least at the uh, ripple frequency. Uh, which is uh, coming at the supply. Okay. So, if it is a 50 hertz, we know 50 hertz is very low. So, that will mostly fall in this flat band and uh, that will be rejected pretty well. But if it is let us a 1 megahertz converter, then we know that 1 megahertz will fall on this and then uh, it may hurt your PSRR. So, we have to make sure that we have enough bandwidth so that it actually at least your switching frequency does not fall close to uh, your unity gain bandwidth. So, usually we look for 20 to 40 dB at least. So, 20 dB means uh, 10 times. So, 10 millivolt will maybe 1 millivolt. If you have a larger ripple then you may look for around 40 dB kind of rejection at that fre frequency. Mm -hmm.